the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Coming up, we announce one very lucky winner of that amazing all bear bike. In tech news, we take a look at some brand new Envy wheels and we're going to wrap up all the main racing news as well. We have got two very well deserved wattage bazookas this week, plus a hack forward slash bodge extravaganza. Is that one, is it? Yeah. I tell you what though, guys, I do really miss that little caffeine court track that we filmed the show last uh, week. Yeah. That was so nice. Mm -hmm. I do, but I don't think we'll be missed there. Uh, it was Greg Loper who pointed out in the conversation that our studio audience last week didn't exactly look thrilled. <laughs> look at that guy. Oh yeah. Oh, well, not we, surprising. Yeah, we obviously didn't make much of an impression in court trick. Just a bounce. It's time now for the caption competition. We had some great entries for last week's photo, which was this one. And the winner is Stuart Harrigan, who says, pros soldier on after the recent spate of saddle theft. I, that's actually, I did do a tiny little lol yeah. about that one. Oh that's yeah, I laughed. Good. Make sure you Always get in touch out. on Facebook, Stuart, and we'll send you out some GCN swag. Well, this week's is this picture of a rather unfortunate Fabian Cancellara oh. in the velodrome in Roubaix. Dan, start us off. I am definitely retiring. That's quite funny. Poor old Fabs. Yeah. In case you haven't watched this show before, you can leave your captions in the comment section just down below and pick out the best one this time next week. And the winner gets a bubble hat with GCN on it. Do they? Really? Yeah, they do. Wow. Yeah. yeah. An incredible finale! Set by Mark! Stallard is on the wheel! Stallard over the top! Matt Heyman in the middle! Matt Heyman takes Parry Roubaix! Heyman takes Roubaix from Tom Bonin! from Ian Stannard. That was absolutely nuts. This year's edition of Parry Bay was yet another nail bite with non-stop action for almost 260 kilometers. Now I'm sure you all know who's won by now, but it went to Matt Heyman, the loyal super domestique of Orica Greenwich, who's now a Parry Roubaix champion. The race was run off again in dry conditions, but it was one of the most thrilling events in Parry Bay's long, long history. Perhaps even more thrilling because it wasn't totally dry, was it? There were some real key sections of mud which proved pivotal. We mentioned it in our preview show that the race normally hinges around the forest of Arenberg, but this year the race was in pieces well before it even got there. And perhaps the crucial moment was a crash on an otherwise innocuous section that actually blocked Cancellara and Sagan and split the group. Yeah, very easy to do in Paru Bay, as this footage from Guy W will show you. Now, he was stood at the side of the Arenberg Forest where there was yet another crash. And as you can see here, all the rides at the back are completely blocked with basically nowhere to go. That's a horrible crash, isn't it? It's Absolutely all horrible. horrible. Uh, not only that, but Guy also captured the horrifying moment when a race motorcycle crashed and pinned Team Sky's and Viviani to the crash barriers. Again, highlighting the big issue of motorcycle safety in Peloton. Yeah, it's yeah. scary, that. Man. What about Cancellara as well? His race was all but over in almost an instant. He just had his wheels and tyres millimetres away from the centre of the crown on a muddy section. Before he knew it, they completely slipped out from underneath him. And Tim DeWall, a photographer, was on hand to take some fantastic pictures in a very prime place. Amazing. Looking at some of his images, can we just take a moment to uh, reflect on the skills of Peter Sagan. Look at that, so Fabian Cancellara crashes right in front of him. He does a one-footed wheelie to ride over Cancellara's bike and then we can just see him in that shot just very artfully uh, sailing in midair uh, and carrying on his merry way. That is, nothing sums up the changing of the guard, does it? We've got the legend of the cobbles, Fabian Cancellara, being literally bunny hopped over by the young upstart world champion. That's an important photo right there. <laughs> Great pictures as they are though, Simon. We've taken the time to put together a full-blown reconstruction just to give a real insight uh, to viewers of exactly what happened. You can just see Nicky Terpstra This is Peter Sagan. This is the unfortunate Fabian Cancellara already prone, laying on the cold. But just look here at the skills uh, of Peter Sagan. Bunny hops, lands on the front wheel with his front wheel, one foot out at the same time, does an endo, as we can see, that unfortunate Nicky Terpstra ends up on the left-hand side, swerves onto the grass before getting back onto the cobbles and still battling to a quite incredible 11th place. 
Now the effects of the mud were also felt by Team Sky. They were in a very strong position with about an hour of racing to go, with uh, Ian Stanard and Luke Rowe in the front group, and also two others, Salvatore Puccio and Jenny Mosco. They crashed on the muddy corners, bringing down Luke Rowe. Luke Rowe then had to put in a monumental effort to get back in contact and did extremely well. Then he sacrificed himself for Ian Stanard, who took a really well-deserved third place, but they'll certainly be ruining what might have been. Yeah, they must. Now, what about other notable rides? And well, Peter Sagan ended up finishing 11th. Uh, Mark Cavendish did a good ride to finish 30th. That was he? really slow. It was under the radar ride, that was. Yeah, superb. it was, yeah. Uh, Fabian Cancellara eventually rolled in 40th, although I'm not sure he's going to be bothered by that one. Uh, and then Taylor Finney continued his comeback with 49th, just one place behind Alexander Kristoff, who is probably going to be trying to forget this classic season in the already. <laughs> It's now time for Cycling Shorts. 2015 Paris-Roubaix winner John Degenkolb is hoping to return to racing in May following his continued recovery from the accident sustained at the training crash in Calpe. Now, he's had five operations on a finger which was severely damaged from a nerve perspective and is waiting till he's got full coordination back in his finger before he ventures back into the peloton. But it is good news that it's heading in the right direction. Mm. Now, before we finish with the subject of fingers for this week, Philippe Gilbert of BMC has also fractured one after an altercation with a motorist who stepped out of his vehicle to confront both he and training partner Loic Vliegen. Now, he will now miss the opening round of the Ardennes races, which is the Brabant Appeal. He's hopeful to be at the start of the Amstel Gold and the rest of them, but we'll have to wait and see. And we understand that police are currently investigating the matter. Mm. How annoying must that be? Mm. That's pretty, that is pretty, pretty bad, bad, isn't it? Now, nothing to do with fingers but equally interesting, I think. Bicycling Magazine posted a story on their website this week where a recent medical study has found that Olympic medal winners are statistically less likely to fall ill than people that had missed the podium. How nice is that? But then, what was even more interesting was that it's not just down to genetic factors, because of the detailed logs that the athletes kept that took part in this study, that uh, you can actually pinpoint lifestyle factors and also training factors that influence how much you get ill. So if you're interested in this, and I'm sure you are, then you can check it out on the uh, British Journal of Sports Medicine, which you probably already subscribed to. And also a good idea to always keep a training diary too, to look back on your own kind of uh, fitness and results. That's it. I have personally found that I've been ill far less since I retired from top level cycling than I was before. I've always, always had a cold. I'm the same as well, same. Exactly the same. Right, we were going to finish this week's cycling shorts with a huge thank you to Pietro Mastia for sending in these amazing lifelike GCN figurines. I'm sure you'll agree, they look absolutely fantastic. I say lifelike because I've got a beard, although Matt is, as you can see, clipped in. Study on me. Can't say this guy, that's me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're right with that. I'll swap over in a minute. Yeah, all right, yeah, it's fine. I'll stop it. Crosswind comes from the left, you're in the gutter. It's nasty, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, it is. A lot of Paris-Roubaix tech is, for want of a better phrase, cobbled together. <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. Uh, as bikes are adapted as much as possible within the constraints of what the riders want and also their sponsors. So it's pretty cool when a brand steps in and actually creates something specifically for Paris-Roubaix. And then it's even cooler when that product actually has real-world potential afterwards. So step forward Envy with their prototype 4.5 SES wheel, optimised mm. for Paris-Roubaix. You almost forgot what you were saying then, because you were so funny, didn't you? <laughs> so what Envy Difficult. realised was that the pro riders at Paris Bay, in using wider tyres on narrower rims, were losing between 5 and 10 watts. So what they've done is created a much wider rim, which will offset that. And this is good news not only for the pro riders racing Paris Bay, but also for those of you who are doing all-road riding, gravel riding, or cyclocross, or any other form of cycling which is currently very trendy. What do you mean trendy? Like this, an analogue GPS computer. Now this little beauty from Ometer has already smashed its Kickstarter target and can be exactly what you're looking for. And it's been endorsed by none other than Fabian Cancellara, which certainly helps. It does look quite trendy, doesn't it? It does actually look all right. You'd need quite a trendy bike for that, I reckon. Yeah, and possibly good hair as well. A beard. And definitely definitely a beard. essential, like a hipster beard. Surprised not taps you up. It's the moment that you have all been waiting for. We're just about to announce the winner of the brand new, the shiny, the amazing Orbea Avant M20 ID. Congratulations to... Ashley Clark! Wow. We'll be in touch to range delivery of your shiny new, rather beautiful Orbea. i probably ask you what size you want as well, I guess. That's a good point. Now, if you didn't win this time, I am sorry. But do not worry, because we will have another competition coming up very soon. So. 
Stay tuned. The Tour of the Basque Country finished just one day before Paris Bay, and the eventual overall winner was none other than Alberto Contador. In fact, his first overall stage race win of this year so far. Now, he went into the final brutal individual time trial in second place, just a handful of seconds down on lead at Sergio Anel, but in winning that event, he managed to turn the tables and take that victory. Nairo Quintana, meanwhile, in finishing second in the time trial, managed to get onto the third step of the podium. Well, interestingly, in that time trial, is it, I think Contra only won it by five seconds, but Nara Quintana, bearing in mind it's only 16k, actually did a bike change from a low pro to a normal road bike, and that may have cost him the race. Well, Contador didn't even ride a time trial bike, did he? Con nope. there was, the time trial was that hard that Contador just rode a standard road bike, the whole thing. He still won it. There we go. That must be pretty tough. Also, another thing that will give you an idea about how hard Tour of the Basque Country is, <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, this is Lasty giving it some beans. <laughs> We need one of these with a grimace, don't we? I was just going to react. It's not a grimace, mate. It's it's like it's smile? incredible. No, the face he pulls is just amazing. It, it is, it, Thomas Berkeley couldn't have done it. Better. He nearly collapsed Facebook with that, didn't he? he collapsed. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Boss Dolmans continued their impressive season with victory at the Energy Vac Tour. The team won the team time trial on the first stage, and then Ellen van Dijk won the individual time trial on stage 4B, and that was enough to secure overall victory. Yeah, it's been a dream year for them right. so far, hasn't it? All uh, right, we shall finish with Marcel Cattell, who added his name, who added his name, shall I say, to the record books last Wednesday at the Shell de Prix by winning it for a fourth time. He just pipped Mark Cavendish to the line. And with Andre Greipel there in third place, it was probably the most star-studded sprint podium that we've seen in years. Like a German British sandwich in fact. It's time now for hack forward slash all in one line, great lads. Uh, bodge of the week. Nice now we're going to start sorry. with Paul Atkins. Now he has found a solution to the problem that you have if you mm. use a physique saddle with one of their specific saddle bags that goes into the back, because then an R saver or an ass saver won't fit in. It's but a niche problem. Just using a standing knife, he's created this and managed to get them all in one very neat package. That, that does look very neat, doesn't neat it? Neat Stanley work there. But uh, next up is Paul, this a hack. from Frederick Shiska, who's built his own work stand that swivels. Ah, That's a lovely swiveling piece of one. Yes, right the there. first swiveling one I think we've seen. It does look good. Hack. Nice work, Frederick. Okay, what about this? Alex Henderson spotted this, this in Sydney. It might need some explanation. Dan, what is going on there? Well, it's obvious it's a headrest uh, down the seat tube to replace a broken saddle. A car headrest. A car headrest. That mm. is one of my all-time favourites. That's a proper bodge. Let's face it, that's a ultimate bodge. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Paul sent us this one in on our Facebook page. Uh, now, his mate James Curson managed to create a very nice bike stand in his room for his Cervelo using a pair of old bars and a stem. That actually looks quite, quite very cool. Very neat. That is very cool, kind of actually. Like, like I would like to do that at my house, I yeah. must admit. Nice work. That's a hack. And also, we're going to finish with Nicholas Ross. Now, he has done this and shown us you know, step by step guidelines in pictures. So, he wanted to be able to use his bike with the clipless pedals with normal shoes and still be comfortable. So, he made these kind of cleat wooden things. Don't know how to describe them really. Put some sandpaper over the top for extra grip. And now he can go down the pub with his Nikes on and not have to put his normal SPD shoes it's on. It's lovely that he's used green sandpaper yeah. that looks like little bits of grass as well. Where it's do you lovely. leave your posh bike though when you've gone to the pub? You've yeah, got that problem. True. So you can run, you can, uh, you know, maybe that's another, maybe, take, know, maybe that's another bodge you could do. Take the bits of wood out to make sure they don't get stolen. But you could also take them off and use them as table tennis bats as well. Yeah. <laughs> or right. coasters. If you've got anything that even comes close to comparing with what he's done there, then make sure that you write into us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag GCN Hack. Was it a hack or a bodge that one, by the way? I can't work hack. it out. It's, that's the hack that keeps on giving. You think that's a hack? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, hack. It's time for GCN's weekly wattage bazooka. <laughs> and this week's pro wattage bazooka with a hashtag is Diego Rosa of Aston. Well deserved. Yep, the Italian rider got in an early 18-man move on stage five of the Tour of the Basque Country, but not content with that, after just 40 kilometers with them, he attacked and went solo. He still had 100 k to go to the finish, but he went all the way there on his own, winning the stage by over three minutes. Absolutely magnificent. How about the GCN viewer, what is Bazooka then? Well, firstly, we had this one sent in from Quilted Llama who said that their rollers melted, such was their wattage bazooka Whoa. in the morning. Now, 
that's definitely a melted roller, isn't it? Looks like it. Not sure we can vouch for the fact that it was a Watches bazooka that did it. Mm. So perhaps you can send in a bit more information about how it happened, because it's, it's an unverified Watches bazooka, definitely. isn't it? So, this one from Paul Kearney. He submitted his friend Andy White. Big Andy, there he is, before unleashing his Watches bazooka. He is a six foot six, 20 stone cyclist, and he unleashed the fury on Sacalobra, Quigmayor, Col de Soyer, which are three big climbs in Mallorca. And then he yeah. still unleashed his washing bazooka on the Rotunda, Oof. whatever that is. So yeah. impressive. Well Fair done, Big play. Andy. Don't forget to keep sending in your watches bazookas using this hashtag. We shall pick them up on things like Twitter and Instagram. And if they're extremely good, we may even do another little reenactment for you. Ooh, nice. stylish. Keep that in. <laughs> Dom has chosen two tweets for us this week, and first up is this internet meme created by Esteban Chavez. Your face when your boss won Power of Bay, and he's got a little rock there from the car park by the looks of it, but lovely effort. Look at that smile. The best smile in the pro peloton. He looks pretty happy about he that. He says, what a legend. I'm really happy for you and the team. Congrats, Orica Green Edge. That is a good tweet. Mm. Yeah, Heyman, of course, working for Chavez at the Vuelta Espana just last September. Uh, the other tweet comes from Peter Sagan. He wrote this. I didn't know that I know how to fly. With this picture from pretty Tim DeWala. Much. Oh, and I've seen earlier in the show with mm. our reenactment as well. The thing is, though, guys, is we're, we're all former mountain bikers, all yeah. of us. We, we could probably do that, you know, if we yeah. need to. Faced with that kind of scenario, we'd, we'd all be staying up, right? Yeah. If there's a log involved, it might be different. Yeah, it's what's a different kettle of fish entirely, isn't it? Where would it come unstuck? It's clipping back in through the cobbled section. <laughs> Hold up, there. lads. Hold up. Hang on a minute. I just got to get back. I stayed on my bike. Tell you Sagan, what. unfortunately, finished 84th after he failed to clip in. Well, after I haven't the missed. <laughs> Ciao. Time now for comment of the week. We've got quite a few for you this week. The first one comes in underneath a Facebook GIF which we put up. Now we didn't manage to get this in last week's show, but it's the podium of the Tour of Flanders and Seth Van Mark has a champagne bottle which explodes, knocking his cap off with the cork. Be lucky it didn't take his eye out, wasn't it? Uh, oh, Robbie Smith <laughs> wrote on Facebook. I have that problem. Robbie says, I feel sorry for him really. The poor guy clearly suffers from premature celebration. I can well, watch that up. GIF over and over again. Yeah, so I've really watched it quite a gift, 15 it? times in a, in a row. Uh, next one, this is underneath our Snot Rocket video, and this is from Andrew Ziegel. I'm most definitely a single barrel guy. I always get friendly fire when using the double <laughs> barrel. And another one here under the same video, this is from Nick Menegon. I nominate Simon for his hashtag snottage bazooka. That is pretty good. Yeah, we've got some more insults for Si, actually, because underneath the rotor first ride video. Now, but it's just time for one last sprint. A stick it in the 11. How are me to sight, they said. 34 by 11, presumably, so? <laughs> no, it was a 39, obviously. Cheeky, isn't it? Yeah, right, underneath the cobbles tape video. Actually, this is another insult to me, isn't it? Yep. Except this one, cleverly, uh, was written in binary. Yeah, someone wrote code, uh, which, yeah, fair Manila play to crit. You. He's what? Manila Crit. Oh, yeah, it? that was his name. Uh, so, fair play to you. Uh, he actually wrote in binary, uh, tell Simon to stop wearing a child sized gilet. It's aero, isn't it? Of course it's aero, man. And, yeah. it, and it does come does out. does actually say that. I actually went onto a website which translates binary and it does come out as that. That does lead us nicely on, though, side to a message, not a comment, but a message we got through from Mark Richards, who just wanted to warn all other GCN viewers that they should make sure they order the right size of kit on the shop. Mm. As I found out, sometimes it does come up a little bit small. That lad doesn't pay for his tide. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got a collaboration with our sister channel, GMBM, where Dan shows Neil Donoghue how to wheelie. Well, this terrifies me. I can wheelie a mountain bike, but I've never tried it on a road bike. And how do these brakes actually work? Does that just clamp onto the rim? Yeah, it's called a rim brake. Oh. And on Thursday, it's had top 10 worst cycle lanes. On Friday, Matt's been cooking again with Hannah Grant, and this time, the king himself, Sean Kelly. Then on Saturday, the pro bike is the Team Coffee's Orbea Urdu TT bike. On Sunday, it is Ask GCN, so make sure you get your questions to us for that. And then on Monday, Dan shot a video about how to avoid numb nuts in the saddle. No, numb saddle era, yeah. Oh, numbness, was it? Numbness, numbness. numbness sorry. Yes, and then yes. Tuesday... For men and women, that video. Oh, is it? Mm. Right back here for the GCN Show.
It's time now for Extreme Corner. Now we've had a bit of a break for the last couple of weeks, probably to get our breath back and our adrenaline levels subside, but this week we are back with the first round of the Downhill Mountain Bike World Cup from Lourdes in France. It's pretty extreme. That is extreme, extreme to the max. Even for an ex pro mountain biker, that was absolutely hallucinogenic. Yeah, you would never have got down that in one piece, <laughs> even back in the day. Well, pressed with a hardtail of Matt, huh? Well, that's true, actually. Uh, now, if you're craving more GCN content, then why not check out Matt's new cookery show, where Hannah Grant, celebrity cycling chef, cooks Flanders fish and chips. You can get through to that just like that, and it's well worth a watch. Tasty. We also discussed the ins and outs of this weekend's Paru Bay in its own video, and that is just down there. And to subscribe to GCN, Click on the globe, wherever it may be.